okay so what we were doing in the last class um, we were looking at multi grid methods right we were looking at series of mechanisms by which we could accelerate convergence of our uh, schemes numerical schemes so these are in a sense modifications to a fundamental scheme you have a fundamental scheme and now you are asking the question is there a way by which i can make this scheme faster meaning from the point that i start the computation to the time that it takes wall clock time i look at the clock and say it takes so much the time that it takes for me to get the solution okay i want to reduce that am i making sense i am not really interested in other details i mean there are situations where you can look at right you can say that the whole is equal to the sum of the parts if i minimize if i optimize the individual parts then the whole will also get uh, shrink down but you will see sometimes that doesn't quite work out when you try to shrink one the other expands and so on so we have to keep our eye on the fact that the metric the measure that we are using to see whether we have made an improvement is we start and we look at the clock we start it stops and we look at the clock and we say yes it's taken less time okay never lose sight of that because it's easy to get caught up in all the numbers cpu times all of this kinds of stuff and lose sight of the fact that the overall time is not either reducing so you are putting in effort but you are not getting anything out of it fine in the last class we looked at a particular scheme right the last sort of half of that class we looked at a particular scheme which was essentially a multi grid method and the idea was that we are going to use multiple grids just to recollect multiple grids in order to accelerate convergence fine and that where did that come from that came from the fact that uh, we said that high frequencies when we say a a, a, a signal say now i will i'll today i will use a little signal processing kind of terminology when we say high frequency right when we say high frequency we have already noted from a previous demo that when we say high frequency we mean high frequency with reference to a grid high and lower comparative to comparative term they are terms that you use to compare two things so you need two things and you have to have another right so the other is the grid the underlying grid what is the structure of your underlying grid so on an equally spaced grid a high frequency and low frequency with reference to that grid are defined and there were schemes that we saw where high frequencies decayed faster than low frequencies see now i'm careful there were schemes that we have seen where high frequencies decay faster than low frequencies that means that there are schemes for which that may not necessarily be true right in which case we need to do something for that today i will tell you something about that okay then uh, so what we basically said was well if the high frequencies decay faster than low frequencies and then we have this low frequency error with which we are trying to contend essentially the low, uh, grid that we have at hand is struggling to decrease that error why not transfer the problem to a coarser grid so that this low frequency error on the fine grid turns out appears to be a high frequency error on the coarse grid okay and therefore will decay faster on that coarse grid that's the idea that is the basic idea of multi grid method okay now today what we will try to do is we will try to write out the whole scheme so first i'll recollect where we left it we will try to write out the whole scheme and then we'll see what are the steps that we need to take uh, in order to how should i say make sure that everything is fine we'll a little patchwork that we need to do right there are schemes which may not be inherently uh de, you know high frequency is decaying faster than low frequency we have to do something for that that's one thing we still want to transfer the problem from a fine grid to a coarse grid but we may have to do something for that okay that's one 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 thing that we have to do and uh, the other thing is all i have said so far is all i have said so far is it's going to run faster it's going to decay faster will it what is the effort involved in doing this how much work are we actually doing right so before you write the program and look at the wall clock time and so on we're going to ask ourselves the question how much work is it actually going to take in order to do this okay work in the sense of computational work there is also implementation related work and i will sort of say some things about that as we go along is that fine okay so first just to recollect where we were we started off remember that the grid size we talked about was h so this is a typical grid size what that means is that if i have and yeah, that's supposed to be equally spaced it doesn't quite look equally spaced if i have equally spaced grids right a typical grid size is h and if i have a linear problem and i will tell you what to do when you have a non linear or quasi linear problem 
linear problem I chose Laplace equation to uh, I chose Laplace equation as an example but it could be any system of equations that we are talking about AH PH equals FH we are trying to solve this and what I had indicated was that we iterate we iterate this a few times or if it is a time marching scheme we march in time right a few time steps. So we do this uh, what was the symbol that I used for the number of iterations was it alpha n times n n times n times I am going to regret that but anyway n times we are going to iterate it n times okay. So then what what do we do from here remember the algorithm we get the residue we get the residue so we get rh which equals fh minus ph where this phi is that intermediate intermediate solution capital phi is the intermediate solution we get the rh then what we transfer rh to f2h 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 right if you want to write it as a equal equal e, an, an equation uh, in books that you may look at they may write something like f2h this is typical notation right so if you you can actually write a matrix form matrix form of this I will re, I will recollect for you what each of these things right we will go through that. So you transfer from rh to f2h on the grid which whose size is 2h you then solve you then either solve or you iterate a few times or take time steps or appropriately okay and do this if this was n1 times this could be n2 times they could be the same they could be different if you have some magical reason for making them different it is up to you okay. Then we said look right if you start with a very fine grid it is possible that the 2h grid is also reasonably fine. So you can then compute after iterating a few times and then you say oh it is not converging fast enough I am not happy with this you can actually compute a, a residue there which you transfer to f4h am I making sense okay. And then consequently we will solve and repeat this process. At this point actually you know the phi is not actually phi it is a correction the phi is if you think back to the algorithm phi is actually a correction. So how the reverse mechanism how does the reverse mechanism work? you take the phi4h that you have got from your iterations that is your iterate you could go on but I will tell you what happens from phi4h and you transfer that to e2h that is the correction at okay and the new phi2h equals the old phi to h okay now you have lots of options see this is the thing about the algorithm developing the algorithm you can see there are lots of options if you want and I would do I would do this you can also sort of iterate a few times there m times if you want. Okay, so the you iterate at that level and then you get a phi at that level right the f, f, f does not change if you want right then you can transfer okay 
this transfer by the way you could write if you wanted to write it as an equality just so that if you look at books I want you to make sure that you have the notation you would write this as e 2 h equals along the same lines i 4 h to 2 h p 4 h right and you can actually write it as a if these are vectors you can actually you can actually cook up you can find out what this matrix is depending on what kind of uh, interpolation or whatever it is that you are doing right we will look at I will give you the appropriate terminology we will go over this blackboard again one more time right is that fine everyone and then you would say p h equals right that is the correction at the h level maybe m times and at the finest grid you always ask the question you compute r h say I am repeating now I am repeating the first line now we are back to the first line but you can ask the question have we converged right the you always iterate on the finest grid a few times and ask the question have we converged does that make sense you want I mean the reason why we are making this effort is I want a grid on that I want a solution on that fine grid because that is what that is the resolution that I want that is what I am looking for right I have decided I have looked at the problem I have looked at I have an idea I have a sense as to what the flow features are like and I have said okay I, I need a grid that is 1 millimeter in size let us take actual physical dimension I need a grid that is 1 millimeter in size I want a solution on a grid that is 1 millimeter in size. So having decided that I pick an H which is 1 millimeter and I go through this process right so I want to make sure that when I finally decide yes I have the solution I am making the decision on the 1 millimeter grid not at the other grids okay the question always arises at this point okay I do not care about the other residues that we have calculated is that fine is that okay are there any questions now we will go over this with a little detail we will we will, we will check out fine we will just check out a little of the few of the things how do we decide what is what is the point here how why how many times do we iterate is there a mechanism by which we can decide how many times to iterate is that just an arbitrary parameter should we have a me method by which we should decide how often to iterate think back to our demo see I said there is a highest frequency that we can represent on a given grid okay so if I am going to go from a grid okay maybe we should say something about grids first okay so if I am going to go from this grid to a really coarse grid it has only one unknown right I am going to go with 3 interior points to 1 interior point then I have to make sure that I have iterated enough on this that there is no component of what I am going to transfer the residue that I am going to transfer which has a frequency higher than what this can represent okay if you go back think back to the demo otherwise what will happen is you will get what the signal or signal processing friends in electrical engineering call aliasing basically that high frequency error will fold back into the low frequency end am I making sense and we will start getting we will start getting a residue here which is spurious which is not the right residue okay so if you talk to your friends who have done signal processing in electrical engineering and so on they would call this process either decimation or down sampling so if you are going to do decimation or down sampling the first thing that you have to do is you have to remove the frequency content that you cannot represent on the coarse grid if you cannot represent it it will only show up as an error it will only contaminate the residue that you have in the coarse grid okay so one possibility is you iterate num enough number of times so that all that high frequency error right that is right right now that is what we have all that high frequency error is eliminated one possibility okay we clearly have to come up with some other way to do this because remember I said there may be schemes that do not decay high frequencies there may be schemes that do not decay high frequencies fast enough right there are all sorts of issues so but we have to decide so you iterate enough number of times you have to make sure that you have done it enough number of times 
that you have only the frequency content in the residue that you are going to represent on the coarse grid is that fine otherwise anything that you transfer from the fine grid to coarse grid will show up in the wrong place okay right okay it will show up in the wrong place place in our frequency domain that is if you look at it in terms of frequency okay right so that 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 is bad that is not good that is not what we want fine the second thing is so this is this this we have to see is there something else that we can do here right uh, what else do we have you transfer from here maybe we will maybe we will stick with this maybe I will finish with this first and then uh, let me see where can I write that I have this I am already at RH I will write it here. So just say you have a scheme so before I, I, I get back to that let, let just so let us just say right we will take an aside and look at this let us just say you have a scheme that is not dissipating fast enough or right or you decide that you are going to iterate a fixed number of times or take time steps a fixed number of times 5 time steps 10 time steps right simply because you remember something I told you earlier when we were doing SOR I basically said look do not look wait for it to converge to certain extent because you do not know how long it is going to take you are committing unknown amount of CPU time right unknown number of iterations always bound the amount of computation that you are willing to do. So you say 5 times I am willing to iterate 5 times but that may not eliminate all the high frequencies but we know one operation that eliminates high frequency we have seen it when we did our when we did our looking at high frequency when we first encountered high frequencies DK is faster than low frequencies that is what that is either the heat, heat operator or the Laplace operator we have seen it that is guaranteed that that really kills it right. So if you have in two dimensions if you have four grid points you take the you take the middle fellow and take the average as the average of the four right we have seen that which is it's a solution to Laplace's equation right that sort of decays and it decays quite fast uh, I do not want I mean I actually have a value here right so I do not want to just throw away what I have at that point. So instead what I will do is I will take the average of these two average of these four right that gives me a central value I already have a central value I will take the average of those two what do I mean by that. I have values a b c d and at the center I have e okay this is what we would call Laplacian smoothing what I would do is I would say a plus right that is a Laplace operator we recognize that for an even grid okay that is like taking omega equals half in SOR uh, right omega equals does that work out half omega equals what 1.5 you are not sure Point 0.5 okay I just throw that I am just throwing that out there to see okay fine I am just painting you it is okay so what do we have so this of course turns out so the way this would the way this would work out if you were to so you can see the Laplace operator here the way this would work out if you are going to actually apply it to R so what are we going to apply it to we are going to apply it to R I have iterated a few times I have decided say 5 times I have iterated I have iterated this equation 5 times I have had enough doing iterations at that level I, I, I compute the residual I have no clue what is the what is the spectrum I have no clue what frequencies RH has all I want to do is I want to eliminate those high frequencies okay so what I am going to do is I know this will do it I know the Laplace operator will do it for me so I am going to, I am proposing to smooth R before I do the transfer am I making sense I am proposing to smooth R this is called Laplacian smoothing so you would write R at any grid point as Is that okay? If you work out that fraction that I had earlier, you will see it will be 4 times. So the R uh, smoothed, the R smoothed, 
would be basically that okay so you can do one sweep you don't feel comfortable do two sweeps i guarantee those high frequencies will be gone now transfer the smooth dar okay so now we are going to add a new we'll add a new step now we have a new improved step that we have so which is why i strategically left myself a gap here right okay so a smooth arch fine and then do a transfer then do a transfer is that fine so at each level you can do that at each level you can smooth arch and then do a transfer so this f2h now this f2h is not going to have any content that it cannot right that that grid can't represent and then in, as a consequence you can iterate this and again i would iterate it a few times smooth again so we'll have smooth and do do the transfer okay fine so at every point when you are doing a transfer you smooth you calculate compute the residue find r that's how it goes that's how it works okay is that fine everyone okay so this is this is as far as making sure that there is no contamination there is no contamination when going from the fine grid to coarse grid okay so we need to do one more thing we will look at is that fine okay everyone you can do smoothing uh, of course you can do you can do a similar kind of smoothing on the way back that's uh, I'll, I'll, we'll get to that uh, the next thing that we do is we want to look at this what is this what is this operation what is this operation that we have okay so how are we going to do this average i mean how are we going to do this transfer rh to f2h how do we do the actual transfer i think i can remove this if i need it i'll come back right okay but in order to see the transfer we are going to actually look at what are the kinds of what kind of grids what are these multiple grids that we are going to generate we look at the we look at how it works there is an underlying structure we look at that okay and then look at what is the transfer how what is this business of transferring what are the ways by which you can transfer so we'll start at the coarsest level because that seems to be the and see if we can get a pattern that seems to be the easiest so the coarsest level is one grid point interior grid point three grid points on the whole the next level is five grid points is that right what's the next finer level nine where do you think this is going so it's going to be basically going as 2 power n plus 1 i uh, know you know why i didn't want n iterations there anyway 2 power 2 power i have also used m k plus 1 okay is that fine right 2 power k plus 1 so k equals 1 k equals 2 k equals 3 and so on fine okay so you could for instance you could for instance if you wanted a fine grid so you wouldn't start with i wouldn't start with 1001 by 1001 right because that's thinking decimal i would start with 1025 1000 you know i would start with 1025 grids if i had a two dimensional problem it would be a 1025 by 1025 as i said to start with 1025 grids and the next level of grids would be 513 you understand then 257 now you understand why you need to go to multiple levels this is 257 grids this is still pretty fine it's just that we want the answer on it's 1 meter length we want the answer on something that's of the order of 1 millimeter okay 1025 is close enough 
okay so then you would go to 129 and so on and you can go all the way down to 3 right if you want so this is the number of levels that you can transfer so this is h it's 2h 4h 8h fine uh, we have tried i mean i think we have gone up to like seven levels or something of like that right okay so you look at this process so now we know we can pick up grids like this this is on 1d what about 2d We we'll take the Cartesian product of it obviously, right. So that could be 3 by 3 grid. Am I making sense? To that you can add maybe I will use a different colored chalk. Oops. That is a 5 by 5 grid. Am I making sense? And we can go on. You can make it a 7 by 7 grid and so on, right. You can make it a 7 by 7 grid. Maybe I will choose that is that okay get a 7 by seven, right 9 by 9 grid okay I am back <laughs> 9, 9 by 9 grid sorry thank you 9 by 9 grid doing suddenly 2n minus 1 instead of 2n plus 1 9 by 9 grid that is one way to do it right so I am constructing it up the other thing is if you had a 9 by 9 grid you can throw things away in what we call the checkerboard pattern or the chessboard pattern okay so you do not have to you can you can for instance uh, you can start you know you can retain you can retain this grid point retain that grid point retain that grid point retain that grid okay then you can retain this one retain this one retain this one am i making sense oops Am I making sense? Right, it is like the black and white squares of a chessboard. Is that okay? So, there, there are obviously once you go to three dimensions, two dimensions, there are different ways. So, this is called coarsening. There are different ways of doing of coarsening. Okay. Is that fine? So, Now what we want is, so we want if you want to go from a coarse grid, if you want to go from a fine grid to a coarse grid, in the multi grid right I, I said signal processing they would call say you go through a down sampling or whatever, in the multi grid terminology that is called a restriction, you restrict right, you restrict. So what you would basically do is you would now, this is what I was talking about, how do I find that I will write that here. So what are the ways by which we can do it? right so one thing is just pure simple injection as they call it what you do is you just throw away the points that you do not want right so if you have okay let us look at, look at this so you have five grids and you want to go to three grids you just throw this away that is one way to do it right another way to do it of course a better way to do it another way to do it a little more expensive we have looked at it in the last class you take the average okay and a familiar average the average would be if this is p p minus 1 p plus 1 the average would be so we are going from we are this is this is uh, residue remember so r p minus 1 plus 2 r p plus r p plus 1 divided by 4 would give you the value at that point looks very suspiciously like Laplace, Laplacian, Laplacian smooth right very suspiciously like Laplacian smooth okay these are all at h this will be r p at r p at 
to h. The value here would be twice this plus each of those divided by 4, okay. What if you are doing in 2D, how would you do it in 2D? I am not going to do 3D because it is, uh, I mean you can work it out but it is a pain to draw the picture but I will do it in 2D. Okay, so this is this would be a full, the best transfer and the most expensive transfer, most operations. You want to get that, you want to transfer the value at that point. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 of those, so what are we going to do now? 8 of those plus 8 of these, right, divided by 16. Am I, am I making sense? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, add up all of those plus 8 times the central fellow divided by 16. Am I making sense? So the logic is now you can see the law where, where it is coming from. So that would be, that would be a, uh, uh, of course I mean you could in theory add more points to it, right. You could, you could increase the support so to speak, you could add more points to it. But this is in itself, there is a certain expense. But you are taking all the, all the points that you are planning to throw away. You are taking data from all the points that you are planning to throw away, that is the idea here, right. You are going to, if you are going, if you are going to take this point, its neighbors are not going to be used, right. So in this case, if you are going to take this point, if you are, unless you are doing the checkerboard pattern, unless you are doing this pattern, if you are just doing the standard, right, the standard coarsening, this is called the standard coarsening. So if you are going to do only the standard coarsening, then you are going to throw away all the neighboring points. Right. So this should be determined really by all the neighboring points. Am I making sense? So you would say summation what should I say? So L in the surrounding set L not equal to P simultaneously or LP not equal to, I should write that a little more carefully, LM, so except for that, except for that one plus 8 times okay, is that fine? So this is how we do the, this is how we do the transfer, this is how we are going to do the transfer. So this will allow you, if you work it out for a grid for a, uh, I would suggest that you start off with a one dimensional grid, you are not and you are never really going, this is only for the, for our, for the sake of our explaining the algorithm to ourselves, you are not going to really, you know, write this matrix as such, but you can just for the fun of it to see what the structure looks right, try to write it out and see what it looks like, okay. So uh, you, you do the transfer. Okay, you do the transfer this way. Am I making sense? Is that fine? Right? You do the transfer. There are different ways by which you can do it. You can do the averaging depending on 1D, 2D or 3D, right? And you transfer it to the coarser grid. Uh, maybe we will come back to this. I leave that portion. What else do we have? So we have done the, we have done, we are now going through this whole process. How do we get back? How do we do this transfer? How does the reverse transfer take place? So I want to go from a coarse grid to a fine grid. So I have to interpolate. So now see there are there, there will be cases. So you have to look you have to you have to look at the various cases. One case is the point is actually in this set. Okay. So typically the notation that you would write is this is this is the grid well this is the grid at 2h and that is the grid at h and 2h but it is okay. What you would basically, so if this belongs, if this belongs to the finer grid, just transfer the data directly. 
if it doesn't belong the from the coarse grid there is no candidate take the average 1d it's obvious you go to 2d in two dimensions if this grid belongs to the if the grid belongs to the fine grid transfer it directly if it doesn't belong but it happens to be so in this case this is a funny mesh let me draw another uh, let me draw another mesh where can i draw it I draw it here i need to erase something i'll erase this i no longer need this there we go okay so what you have done is this is a coarse grid that is the coarse grid okay I am doing standard coarsening that is the coarse grid. So if it if it belongs to the same grid line if it is on the same grid line but does not belong to that mesh take the average same thing okay. So you can take in order to find this you can take the average of these two if it does not belong to the same grid line. So this works even here right even in the vertical direction it works it does not belong to the same grid that is like this a little more complicated then you take the average of the 4 okay is that fine right. So on this side take the average this way on that side take the average that way and in the center one take the average of the 4 have I missed anything I think that covers all possibilities. Is that okay that covers all possibilities right. So that is how you transfer from a that is how you transfer from a coarse grid back to a fine grid. So the correction that is how the correction would be transferred from a coarse grid back to a fine grid is that okay. So if you say that I want phi 2 h to go to E h this is what you would use fine. So now we come to the critical question. So we have got an algorithm what we are able to do is we are we have the solution presumably you iterate a few times on the fine grid right and we can we can transfer down residues to coarser and coarser grids transfer back corrections to finer and finer grids and we have these nuances residual smoothing and so on do all of those kinds of things right all that neat stuff we have an algorithm what does it cost us okay what is the cost on what grid do we want the solution so back here on what grid do we want the solution we will pick a big problem 1025 so maybe I would say 1025 by 1025 or 1025 grid 1025 okay this is the grid on which we want the solution fine. So if you were to take either whatever equation you are solving Laplace's equation for example is a good place and you are iterating it would take a certain number of iterations to get a solution on the grid of size 1025 a solution that is to your satisfaction right 5000 iterations 5000 iterations 1025 grid points am I making sense okay. So if you were to in between transfer the problem to a 513 grid point grid a mesh that has 513 points then two iterations here is the same as one iteration there. right remember when we are talking about uh, one of the things that I said when you find out how fast is my computer program running what was the what did I ask you to do I told you to find CPU time per grid point per iteration or per time step okay. CPU time per grid point or per iteration of per time so that gives you a measure of your program how what what it is up to. So if you right I do not why, why should averaging be more expensive just because I am on a course of grid that does not make sense right. So I do not expect I do not expect right unless you do something really bad in your programming I do not expect that the 513 by 513 CPU time per grid point per, per iteration will be more than this. So the work 
per grid point is the same. Okay, the work per grid point is the same. So now I want to get a measure, right? So I will say, wait a minute. If you didn't do multi grid, you would be doing so much work, so much work on 1025 grids. So I will call one sweep or one time step or whatever scheme that you are using through this 1025, your finest grid. I will call that one work unit, right? We will start off by defining what, what do I mean by this work. So we will call that one work unit. Am I making sense? Sweeping through this, your finest grid making one iteration or one time step, I will call that one work unit. So if I have one work unit here, two iterations here will correspond to one work unit or basically one iteration here would be one half work unit, one iteration here would be one fourth work unit, right and so on, one eighth work unit. Am I making sense? So it is better for me to be doing 8 iterations here in comparison to 1 iteration there, okay. So I will show this, this process of going from coarse grid to fine grid in a graphical fashion and this is a standard graphical fashion that people use in order to demonstrate multi grid method and because the picture evokes an image, I mean there is a, 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 a letter it gives it a name. So what you do is, this is at the level H, I go from H to 2H, 2H to 4H, 4H to 8H, we will go 4 levels. Back to 4H, back to 2H, back to H, okay. So this represents one cycle because of the way it looks, it is called a V cycle. And of course, you know, you know it is called a V cycle because there is going to be another cycle, right, a different cycle. What is a different cycle? I basically look at this and say, wait a minute, you mean this takes one work unit and this takes only one eighth work unit? I want to spend a lot of time here. After all, I am always going to end there. Right, I do not want to, I do not, so I want to spend more time here. So what you do is you go H, 2H, 4H, 8H, 4H, now we have a choice. You can go back to 8H, 4H, say yeah, I like that, I like, I like that, right, fine. This is called a W cycle. And obviously W cycles come in lots of flavors, right? The minute you see, the minute you create the renovation, lots of things that you could go 8H, 4H, 2H come down or you could go 8H, 4H, 2H, 4H, 2H, 4H, 8H, you know, you can, you know, you, you can see, I want to spend a lot of time down here, right? Because it does not, it does not cost me anything, right? As long as I come back and I iterate a few times at H because then I say hey, residue has gone to 0 at H, I have got the solution. Am I making sense, right, okay, are there any questions? The work units in one dimension go as 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. How about in 2D? Ah, it goes down faster, right? So in 2D, so in one dimension, this is work units per sweep or time step or iteration or whatever, 1 by 2 power k kind of a thing, okay, like 1 by 2D. for that is great. Now we know 3D is where we want to do this though I have not shown anything. 3D so this the savings are enormous. 1D you may not you know you do a toy problem just to learn how to do this but you have to do at least 2D right. 
in order to say that wow I have got something really great. So this is going to be 1 and that is going to be 8 right am I making sense 32 what is that going to be 128. 64 2 power 2 this is 2 power 2 2 power 4 2 power 6 64 so this is going to give me 2 power 8 256 the power of powers of 2 are worth 3k fight worth but you have to pick the right power of 2 <laughs> they are not only worth knowing but you have to make sure you pick the right power of 2 so not you no use knowing the powers of 2 if you pick the wrong power of 2 okay fine fine I mean just look at this you just go down right you just go down a few levels this is nothing I mean so you do you take you take 10 time steps on this so I tend to 512 time steps on that right and that is like taking one time step on the finest grid or one iteration on the finest grid why would you not want to hang around there right. So if you are doing in 3D if you are doing 1025 by 1025 by 1025 it is a lot of effort 1 billion more than a billion right but you come down you come down here and it is not that bad it is really not that bad okay as long as you make sure that you are always checking for your convergence at the do not forget that okay there is one last thing you know there is always there is always a little wrinkle that we can throw in say why start at a fine grid right this was remember when we talked about initialization we said hey one way to do it is start at a coarse grid and transfer yes we can do it here right so why start at a so you basically say why should it start there start here right start at 8 h transfer it to 4 h that is the way to do it you understand what I am saying you already have it you already have it so the crit critical thing is what is the so you this multi grid methods okay lot of people just do not get into multi grid you do not see multi grid methods used as, as often as they should be okay this is what this is my observation there are lot of research being done lot of enthusiasts if you want to go out on the net you can search for you can just search for mg net enormous amount of resources huge amount of resources right the critical thing that you have to do to make sure that all of this works is something that you have to do anyway. So you have to make sure you have to make sure first that you implement this right if you do this you are set what are what are the things that we have here that are different from your standard solution say standard solution is given a grid take time steps right given a grid take time steps or do iterations. So first of all your program that you have the program that you have has to be somehow changed right. So if you are talking about Laplace equation if you have phi and you have you have a Laplace equation solver right that you are using right now you just you just have a solver right that says oh give me the boundary conditions whatever in some fashion and solves Laplace's equation right what you need to do is you need to convert that into a function that can be called. So you convert it to a function get phi which takes the grid which takes the grid or the grid level or whatever it is which takes the grid level am I making sense right and possibly an initial guess and all of that kind of stuff I do not put everything else takes a grid right and it should return to you it should return for you the residue should do one iteration come back and return a residue or do n iterations and come back and return a residue am I making sense. So your program that you have right now that solves Laplace's equation or whatever it is it has to be changed it has to become a function because you are now planning to put something piggyback on top of it to make it run faster right. So you are going to say do this on a 1025 by 1025 grid and it should come back one iteration and give you a residue or you should be able to say take 10 iterations this is a little better take 10 iterations with this initial guess 
okay so maybe I will make it a little more with this initial guess at the level k take 10 iterations I am just making it up take 10 iterations okay so now you have got this you can just pass it right and it takes 10 iterations and what it returns is the residue you can then do you need to have what is the next thing that you need to have you have to be able to do Laplacian smoothing to it you have to smoothen right so you have to have some smooth which takes a residue right and returns a smooth residue am I making sense right as to whether you actually implement it in this fraction whether you actually have these functions you will have to figure it out but what I am saying is these are operations they are atomic operations you implement each one of these test them make them make sure that they work if you got this then the rest of it is relatively easy then what is the other critical thing that you need transferring you understand what I am saying so you have to have something I H 2 or 2 if you want whichever I do not know what you call it you know capital H let us make let us otherwise we will have too many 2 H's okay right fine grid coarse grid. or it takes R and gives back F whichever way you want to do it. So this gives me R, this gives me R, this also gives me, this gives me an F okay. In fact if this is a generic function it will take two arguments, it will take the K because you need to know or not, not K will take the k right you need to know what level you are the actual implement as I said the actual implementation will vary so you will need to know what what level you are you get the f then what what else do you need you need the other way around find to course you need uh, correction equals which will take you from fine to course to course to back to fine am I making sense if you do this this is the critical part if you do this you are set right but the idea is to implement this make sure that for a grid any grid it works do not worry about whether you are solving Euler equations Navier-Stokes equations Laplace equation it does not matter the minute you start worrying about what it then that gets to be a problem okay is that fine okay right. So I guess that is uh, that is what we have for multi grid methods you can get a tremendous amount of speed up we will see where it goes okay just try it out see where it goes.